All right, um, let's dive in. Yeah. Let's dive in because I think this first topic, I know you didn't leave a lot of time for it, McNuggets, but I think it's going to be good because if, if you guys are all going where I think you're going, I'm going to have to tell you why you're wrong. Okay. Yesterday, Kevin Stefanski announced the captains. Okay. And it's the first time he's done so as a head coach. He didn't season do it captains. his first season. Season right. captains. Well, season captains. Cap. Yeah, normally they were game by game. Right. This year, voted by the players, and they are for the entire season, and here they are. And I don't think anybody can pick fault with any of these. These, mm. these are the five that no. – I don't know that I would add Hewlett in there, but it just – Well, they a, probably wanted a special teams guy. Yeah. yeah. And, and Usually it's two offense, two team, defense, and a special and teams. And he is the most notable special teams player we have, right? I mean, yes. Cade York is a draft pick, but, like, when you look around the special teams team photo, it's a yeah. lot of new faces. Sure. Yeah. So, there they are. I don't think anybody has an issue with that. I think the question here is this. Is this a coincidence that for the first time in Stefanski's career, now that Baker's gone, that he's going with seasoned captains? Never did it in the Baker I don't, era. I, as much as I have fun in, in taking shots at Baker, and there's Ben Axelrod who works with WKYC, Interesting, the first season the Browns chose to do it. Uh, I, I, think, I do think it's a coincidence. I don't believe this is any kind of indication that he didn't want to do this with Baker. I think it's smart. I never understood why you would pick. I thought it was very Mickey Mouse picking captain, different captains every week. That, that seems silly A lot of to coaches me. do that. Yeah, I don't like I mean, it. I mean, I think it's You're good. spreading the love, for one. It's a little high schoolish. Exactly, exactly. I think it's important to pick captains. Now, I think you can adjust, like uh, – you know, there's, there's not much of a difference between the Browns and my Little League team, so I'll give you that as an example. I, no. picked, I picked two captains for my Little League team in the beginning of the season, and then halfway through the season, there were two other kids that really stood out in their leadership, and I added them as additional captains to the right. team. Now, what were the captain duties at the Little League games? Oh, very serious stuff. I can, this is secretive. <laughs> Make I can't sure the ice bucket's in. filled. No, not even. It was really very. It was really almost nothing. Right. But it was a way. It was, it was figurehead. It right? was a way of recognizing them being good teammates and good leaders. So on you've the team. got no conspiracy here. You just think that Stefanski said no, it's good for a No, I just think he's now he's in his third year in the league. I think if you're a smart coach, if you're a smart player, you're always thinking about things you could do better or things. And maybe the right. players said to him, "Hey, coach, this whole switching captains every week is stupid." Let's recognize some of the guys. And I think, I don't really know about Hewlett, but the other four guys are clearly no smart players, good leaders, guys you would obviously pick I from the outside. Denzel Ward might be on there, maybe. Yeah. But Walker's a great pick. Everybody be, loves Anthony Walker. They love him in Indy. Leader. They love him here. And guys, guys yeah. will take a hill with him. Jason? I think captain is overrated. Like, I don't think... These are it grown, probably is. These yeah. are grown men. Like yeah. it's it literally like okay. Although I've never heard of that before. No, I, I, I had neither. I, I got to start a trend here. But high, high school, I get it. Even college, I get it. These are grown men, professional adults, earning millions of dollars. But I, someone's got to go out for the coin toss. I, okay, fine. But I do think, Paul. I think you touched on. I, I think it's a coincidence too yeah. with Baker. I don't think it has yeah. anything to do with Baker not being here. I think it has more to do with Kevin's in his third year now. Yeah. Yeah. And now there's a familiarity with the program. There's a familiarity with the, with the players that he has that he did not have year one do you really want to trust the player vote do you really want to pick guys yourself who you don't really know right so i think it's really just <laughs> dare i say it the progression <laughs> of a high functioning franchise that has its head coach in place for three years in a row i'm not ready to call the browns high functioning yet yeah but this is a clue of a high functioning franchise who now has <laughs> a head coach who understands the personnel that he has we'll take any breadcrumbs we can get i know it's pitiful <laughs> <You know. laughs> but ultimately i just think the whole topic is is a bit overrated on yeah. when it comes to captains in the nfl g bush how about you you think it's a, you think it's a coincidence am i skip Bay bayless voice once again adam <laughs> Once again, Jason, you've left too much to me on the bone. <laughs> I thought you were going to pick it, but you didn't, so I'll square everybody away. <laughs> this happened specifically and strategically. Yeah. If you look at it, what well, has nothing to do with Baker, but it does have to do with a quarterback. You yeah. see, when you look at Deshaun Watson, right? Everyone knows he's the best player on your team. Everybody knows that he's going to be gone 11 weeks. Everybody knows what kind of publicity is out there. These captainships were specifically picked for people as a deflection, right? So every time you want to say something bad, you then have to go speak to a captain or talk to a captain. And those people who he picked have shining resumes. 
Miles Garrett is loved, and he's probably one of the best players in the league. There's no better teammate than Nick Chubb. Anthony Walker, people talk about him as a man of the year candidate all around the league. Yeah. So when you mentioned Cleveland Browns for so many months, it was Deshaun Watson. Why would you do it allegations? Now, as a captain, when you mention Cleveland Browns, guess what? You mentioned and you think, oh, Nick Chubb, because every time you see him run the ball, you see that C. Every time Miles Garrett gets a sack, you see that C. Yep. And what it does, it's imagery. Imagery is very powerful. It's subliminal. So now, after 11 games and they come back, you can't just start going in on Deshaun Watson because if the Browns are playing good, you're going to say, look at our four captains and how they played, held the team together. And now he's just one of 53 out there yeah. coming to do his job. It was so specific. You came close. You came really close. Mm. You, you, were, you were going down the path. Mm. But he, I, in my view, he did it to avoid having to make a difficult decision in weeks 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. The you last six used, games. You should have used your, your, your uh, Stephen A. Stephen Stephen a. a. Boys. I you, thought about it. When you, you went Skip Bayless, yeah, I thought about you, it. See, I'm setting you up. I was getting a little nervous because in 10 years, I never agreed with Skip. <laughs> but as you started, I'm like, okay, he's never. He's not close. once in now, 10 years. Occasionally, I did, <laughs> but rarely. Um, I, I think this was done... Um, and I don't want to make this grand conspiracy theory of it. I think when he was thinking about what are we going to do this year? Are we going to do it as we did last year? And if, if so, how might that play out? Once Deshaun Watson comes back on the field, if he names Deshaun Watson a captain, it's a story. Yep. If he doesn't name Deshaun Watson a captain, it's a story. You don't need distractions the last six games of the season. So he circumvented all of that and said... I'm picking captains for the season, and now he's off the hook. He doesn't have to name a captain that would automatically be a story. Because in week 12, when he comes back against the Texans, if he's a captain, we're talking about it. Oh, yeah. Is this oh, yeah. the right look? Yeah. yeah. If he's not a captain, we're talking about it. What, don't they trust him? He's finally back. <laughs> None of that, None of that will happen that, this year. That, you know, maybe they were, and maybe it's something in between where they were thinking about doing it anyway. And somebody said, you know, if, if we perhaps, do it, if we do it for the season, we don't have to deal with this right. later in the and, year. And so I actually, I've been critical of Stefanski over the last season with some of his play calling decisions, his decision to keep Baker out there week after week after week. But when he does something good and gets something right, I want to yeah. give him credit. And I think that this is a very smart decision for Kevin Stefanski. Yeah. He has taken a major storyline that could become a distraction and he's eliminated it from the equation. And there's going to be storylines this year. Yep. Both before Watson gets on the field and after. Any that you can eliminate in advance, I think it's a strategic move. I think it's a wise move. Now, McNuggets, you think, I can tell by your tone on our meeting this morning. Yeah, he feels it's something different. You think, oh, now Baker's gone. Let's name a captain for the season. So go ahead. We'll give you the floor. I just think I don't believe in coincidences. I think when, those, when these things happen, there's usually some thought process behind it. And I think all you guys made good points. I think, A, it is smart to avoid waiting for Watson to have to make that decision. I right. think Jason and Bull are right that maybe it's just a maturing coach. But I also think he's not a new coach in the NFL. He's been in the NFL for over a decade. This is not the first time he's seen other teams name season captains and for him to wait until his third year when the guy that he may not have seen eye to eye with is now gone, especially at the most prominent position. Yeah, but think field. back. Think back before last season. What would be the rub between Stefanski and Baker? Then why not name season Th captains th last year and make Baker? Because went he south. didn't do it in his first year either. But, Mikey, th things went south between Baker and Stefanski. Uh, and, and that's – neither of them have acknowledged that publicly. Jason but, has. Well, Jason. No. He, well, I, yeah, but there I'm saying – There were, there were but friction points for yeah, sure. Yeah. Right, but I'm saying Baker and – and Stefanski haven't said publicly they have a problem with the other one. No. Even though we know from Jason's reporting that that's the case. There was I, friction I, it's for sure. It's obvious. But I don't think that happened until this last season. Right. So, you know, you would think that Stefanski would have been breaking his back to make Baker a captain. Right. Going into last season, I don't think they had, had a beat. In 2020. Right. They made the playoffs. So, I don't buy that they theory. They almost beat Kansas City. They had a great year. And Baker's stock was here. So I don't know why he wouldn't have just said, he's our guy. He's our captain. Well, that's what I'm saying. He could have, or he had the decision or the option to name season-long captains before last season. And maybe he felt even with Baker's stock and his play was, was high, he wasn't fully bought in on his leadership abilities. And being one of those guys, as G. Bush alluded to, who the younger guys go to with issues. I think it was fair to question <laughs> Baker's leadership abilities even going into last year. 
However, I don't buy in the end that that was the reason they didn't do it because I don't yeah. think Stefanski and Baker had any problems going into last I, year. I think what we they saw was a two-year right? trend. Yeah. I don't know that that makes a trend. I mean, yeah. but for the first two seasons, Stefanski decided to do it one way. I think we should be looking more at the fact that for his third season, he decided to change it. Yeah. And the obvious question is why? And for me, the obvious answer is he doesn't want the Watson storyline distraction at the yeah. end of the season. And two, I, go ahead. I, it's a great point you make, Jay, because I do think that the Browns are trying to run away from as many headlines about this as they can. And right. when he comes back, it's going to be enough of a zoo and a circus <laughs> without adding things that aren't necessary to the conversation right. like this. And I'll, the last thing I'll say, I wholeheartedly believe Kevin thinks Baker's a good quarterback in the NFL. Yep. He's reiterated a Deshaun's number of better. times that he was prepared to move forward with Baker as the quarterback. Yeah. Right. And, and, but, and there are, you, but you said Deshaun's better. Deshaun's better. Well, yeah, I don't think there's yeah. any argument about that. Yeah. Right. But your point shouldn't be left on the cutting room floor because, and I don't know if history will finally write the tale as to what happened because sometimes these stories get out and sometimes they don't. Yeah. Someone may write a book 15 years from now where they really focus in on the transition from Baker to Watson. And what we may well learn, just a guess, we may well learn there was one voice in the room that wanted to bring this guy to town no matter what. And I'll well, let you guys figure out who that might have been. It won't be me. I wrote one book and it damn near <laughs> killed me. So I'm out of the, I'm out of the book writing business. And, and, and for, I, would, I would like it to be you, actually. <laughs> and you take it with a, you could take this with a grain of salt, but I, I really think that he didn't value captains before. He thought, you know, our coaches have <laughs> emphasis on stuff. They get in two, three years, and they're like, mm, that really didn't matter that much. I think he values it now because look at the people who are now wearing that C. Now, if you want to make the playoffs, each one of these people want to play, right? Like, if you need a play, Nick Chubb has to give it. If you need a third down stop, Miles Garrett has to get that play. Yeah. Yeah. So when they look down and say, oh, goodness, this gets rough, sometimes that little C just reminds you, okay, this is, this is where I need to be at and what level I, I got to play at. I right? think it's clearly four players that the other players look up to. They're players that talk to the media most often, have the best. Those guys all have good relationships with the media. Yeah. It's not like... Uh, you know, like Baker had kind of a shaky relationship with some of the media members. Right. Those guys have all relationships. They talk all the time, and they're good representatives <laughs> of the franchise. Yeah, but to that point, what's funny yeah. to me is yeah. if you just look – what does a captain do? He leads, right? Yeah. He leads. Now, there's a lot of ways to lead. You can lead silently. Traditionally in the NFL, your best leaders, when you start thinking about the greatest leaders of all time, yeah. they're not silent. They're very no. vocal. If you think yeah. of Ray Lewis, you think they're fiery guys, right. Drew Brees – What's funny to me is in their two captains, yes, they have the best two players in Chubb and Garrett. Garrett is growing more into that role, and I think he's more comfortable in that skin now. But Chubb, as much as I love everything about everything he does, both on the field and off the field, no one's ever going to mistake this guy for a guy that the team's going to follow to take a hill. Well, he's just, he's just not that personality, I, I, and I'm not yeah. knocking him for that. I, but I don't know. I mean, in the locker room, like, he's not a rah-rah guy publicly. He doesn't do no. anything crazy. He doesn't say anything crazy. But those guys in that running back room, they really look up to Nick Chubb. I think everyone The whole does. group looks up to him. The yeah. whole team looks up to him and admires him, Jason, I, I would say. Yeah. Right? So, like. But if you list the, the characteristics but I don't think you, you want your leader to have. I hear you. He's but got I think, them all except for. I think eventually the, role, the, the quarterback has to be the leader, by the way. Like, eventually Watson's got to be yeah. the captain and the leader. I agree with that. But I do think, like, I think about back, and we got our guest? Mikey's saying, like, urgently in there. Yeah, Here no, we, 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 we have Jim, and I just wanted to okay. Oh, okay. This from yeah, just, he's going to wrap up this last point. Last point, point 15 in seconds, is I just think back to when, like, Eli Manning became the quarterback of the Giants, and Tiki Barber was the leader of that team, and he was yeah. not that much of a rah-rah guy. Like, I never thought of him at the time. Maybe I'm misremembering, but I never thought of him as a rah-rah guy. But they needed Eli Manning to become the leader. But but Tiki was able to hold that mantle for a couple of years till Eli was ready. And, and you know, it's a little different because yeah. Watson's not a rookie. But no. he'll hold the mantle down for now. All right. Yeah. Do you need?